Halloween, all my ghouls and goblins, and welcome to Home Eck with Julie Geck's Halloween Spooktacular. Of course, I am dressed up as a witch this year. I could not skip the year, even though COVID is happening. You know I'm not going to skip Halloween. So I'm all dressed up, nowhere to go, but I'm ready for it. I've got a great meal planned. I have a very festive menu. So first is shredded zombie gut sandwiches, also known as pulled pork sandwiches with the most delicious barbecue sauce. And for the side, we have roasted witch's fingers, also known as roasted fingerling potatoes with lots of garlic to keep those vampires away. And lastly, for dessert, we're gonna go creeping through the cemetery for some dirt cups with gummy worms. And of course, you guys know I'm not gonna skip cocktail hour. So tonight I'm going to have Halloween sangria. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Stay tuned to watch all the recipes and I'll see you next week. Happy Halloween. All right, let's get right into the recipes. We're gonna start off with the pulled zombie guts, also known as pulled pork sandwiches. So this is a crock pot meal, and so I'm gonna just end up throwing everything into the crock pot. First, I'm gonna start off with roughly chopping one huge shallot. I like to use the shallot because it's kind of a hybrid between garlic and onion, and I didn't want huge onion chunks in with the pulled pork. And so the shallot just added the right flavor without those huge texture pieces. So like I said, just a super rough chop and then we're going to throw it into the crock pot. Next up, I'm adding a few tablespoons of honey mustard. I just think that the tanginess of mustard adds a really great flavor and kind of complements the sweetness of the barbecue sauce. So here I'm adding a full bottle of the barbecue sauce. I use Sweet Baby Ray's original barbecue sauce. It's my favorite barbecue sauce at the grocery store. You can use any kind of sauce that you like. You can even make your own if you're feeling ambitious, but I was not. <laughs> then I throw in, this is about a three and a half pound pork shoulder with the bone in. Then I'm gonna add a few seasonings. This is a little bit of cumin, a little bit of chili powder just for some nice heat. And then I just flip the bottle upside down to try to get the last bits out of the barbecue sauce. So just topping it off with that. And then another little bit of mustard just to go on top. And then I submerge the whole thing with about two cups of water. It's okay if it sticks out a little bit, uh, but I did want some liquid in there just so it didn't dry out. Then I just turned the crock pot on high for four hours and put the lid on and let it sit. All right, so while that is cooking away, I'm gonna start on my cocktail. I wanted to let the sangria sit for a little bit, so I started it right when I put the food in the crock pot. So I'm using two bottles of Apothic Red Red Blend wine. You can use your favorite red wine. Um, this is just what I saw on Pinterest, and it gave it a really nice dark red color. Um, I'm honestly I'm not picky with wine in sangria because you're going to taste the fruit and the sugar a lot more than the wine itself, so don't go spending a ton of money. Then I'm just gonna cut up some black plums. Um, I had three plums here. I just cut the pits out and then cut them into quarters. And then I also had um, some black grapes that I just rinsed really well and cut the bigger ones in half. You'll see that these grapes were massive. <laughs> so I cut a few of them in half but left most of them whole. See, look at how big that is. What kind of mutant grapes are these? <laughs> And then I actually rinsed a few grapes and put them in the freezer. I just wanted to let them freeze up so that I could mix them in with the sangria once I poured it into a glass. So the sangria wouldn't get watered down and then you could eat the grapes later. Next I added just a few tablespoons of brandy. You can add as much or as little as you want. I just wanted a little extra flavor in there besides just rub wine. And next we're gonna make the dirt cups. So I'm just using a prepared 
pudding mix. This is a cookies and cream flavor because I don't love chocolate pudding, uh, but you could do chocolate or vanilla or any flavor pudding you want. I just followed the instructions on the back of the box. So it was the pudding mix and then two cups of cold milk. And then I basically spent the next like 15 minutes whisking this together until it thickened. I got to a point where I was like, am I following these instructions wrong? <laughs> like, I felt like it just took forever for it to thicken up, but it eventually did. So just keep whisking. So next I poured it into four glasses. This makes four servings and I just separated it evenly. Next up was the fun part. So I found these mini Oreos and I bought two cups of them and then I put them in a plastic Ziploc bag and then I realized I didn't have a rolling pin. So I just used one of my other kitchen spatula things and just smacked them real good. Try to get some crumbs. I did want to leave a few bigger chunks of the Oreos in there just because I like that texture and that crunch in there. You can definitely even put these into a food processor if you wanted to. Next, I added gummy worms and then put them in the fridge to set up until I was ready to eat them. Next is the roasted fingerling potatoes. So I just got a big bag of fingerling potatoes and I doused them in olive oil, salt, pepper, and a ton of garlic, like I said. Gotta keep those vampires away. And I use the pre-minced garlic. Does anyone else use this? I feel like it's just the biggest kitchen hack. I hate peeling garlic. That's like the worst job in the kitchen is having to peel garlic. So these jars of minced garlic at Trader Joe's or at any grocery store. It's a good hack. Uh, lots of salt and pepper. Potatoes need a ton of seasoning. They're so bland without it. So I would probably say I added like three or four teaspoons of salt. That little measuring spoon that I use is like a half a teaspoon. I also added a bunch of fresh thyme and rosemary leaves. I just love the flavor of rosemary with potatoes. I think it's such a classic combination. So I just peeled the leaves off of the stem and threw them on top of the potato, gave them a good toss, and then let them roast in an oven preheated at about 425. And it took about 25 minutes, 20 minutes for them to cook all the way through. Okay, so by now the pork is pretty much done. I just pull the bone right out again with the bone in. It makes it, I think it adds a lot more flavor and it's really easy to just take out once everything is cooked. So I just transfer the meat into a bowl and I start shredding. I just use two forks to shred. Um, honestly, the meat was so tender, I could have just used one fork to, to shred it up. Um, but I wanted it to be in smaller pieces, I don't like big chunks, and then if there was any fat in there, I was able to just pull it out and throw it away. Um, but this was ugh, so good. Alright, and then I plated my meal. I've got my pulled pork sandwiches, those roasted fingers, my dirt cup with those gummy worms. And of course, the Halloween sangria. I set the mood with some candles and I even got some festive plates and cups. I actually found these at the grocery store. I was kind of surprised. And then I have this cute candle that my mom made me. And then of course, all my spooky Disney decorations. Everything turned out so good and so delicious. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much again for watching and I hope you have a very happy Halloween.